what's happening? What you had to do, but I'm glad you did it. <laughs> yeah, I actually uh, stole my fiance's hat I bought her, and I wore my ring for you like you told me to. So. Let's see, let's see, show it. Uh, let's see. You have to back it up a little bit. Oh, can you see it? Back it up a little bit more. There you go. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh, good job. Thank you. Y'all, this is Tom. I don't know how many of y'all got to meet him this weekend, but he is a former, uh, former Major League Baseball player from Peoria, Illinois. And um, he got his million dollar ring this weekend so we were lucky enough to be there to see it so congratulations on that and he's got an awesome story and i can't wait for y'all to hear it yeah well you know the weekend was just absolutely fabulous uh you know we had what 12 1500 people there and i remember eight and a half years ago when i got started with the company our conventions were 150, 200 people. So it's awesome to see the company grow. And, you know, the only thing is we got to get some more men in the company because uh, we're getting outnumbered now. Um, we're, trying, we're trying. Yeah, but but my journey started eight and a half years ago. Um, before Singular, I was a Major League Baseball player. I weighed 195 pounds. I was in great shape. And 20 years later, I weighed 238, high cholesterol, high triglycerides, lower back pain, no energy. I was 47, and, uh, you know, I was going to the chiropractor every other week. I'd get the flu and a cold every year. And I was in a flux also financially. So when Freddie called me, I was open to the opportunity as well. I was very skeptical about the products because I really hadn't done a whole lot of nutrition. When we played baseball, they told us to get a rest and to eat right, and that was about it. So what a difference it made. I lost 14 pounds, three inches off my waist in the first eight days, and right away then I was ready to share and I was ready to start making some money to get my product paid for because I owed my dad $1,400 at age 47. Um, the reason I was in a bad financial situation back in uh, 1990 after I made the major leagues, I was put in the hospital, and I actually was diagnosed with a chemical imbalance in my brain. So I've suffered with depression and anxiety now for 28 years. And it hasn't been fun, but, you know, I've made it through, and I know the supplements helped me uh, along with the medication I have to take. And, you know, obviously you mentioned I've made a million dollars. So there's been – months where I haven't been able to get out of bed. So if you guys are serious about building a business and you're healthy, just go and run hard and get after it because, you know, it's a box of hope, not just for your health, but also financially. So basically I started sharing my story and within 13 days I made $511, which took all the pressure off of me. Um, in four months, I was earning part-time $1,900 a month, and after eight months, I was at $4,000 a month. Now, everybody's uh, results are going to vary, and those are pretty rapid results, but if you think about it, if you could help somebody get to $500 or $1,000 a month, that could make their car payment. It could take the pressure off uh, of making a mortgage payment. It could help get their kid in a private school you know 500 to a thousand dollars a month is more money than people think plus they start seeing it bigger and they once they get to a thousand they know they can get to two thousand and that's kind of the baby steps that I took but I kept doing it uh, for about three and a half years and I told myself if I get to ten thousand a month I'm gonna go ahead and give up my baseball and softball service and I'm gonna go full-time so I did that and uh, about, I was hovering around gold director for probably a year and a half. I just couldn't move. I was making enough money, but, um, I ended up in 2015 in January, I got sick again and I was in a severe depression and I went from gold director to silver manager and I had already quit my job. I was suffering physically, and I wasn't able to lead. I wasn't able to build. 
And when I woke up out of that cloud, I had to get back to work. And I talked to Mark Walker about it. And he said, when you feel good, run. He goes, when you don't, you know, talk to Freddie, you know, delegate, get some help. And that's what I did because anybody in our company, in my opinion, if you reach out to them with your heart and you ask them for help and you're sincere, you're going to get it. And we have a lot of leaders in this company and a lot of people that are just starting out are afraid to talk to, and that's a mistake. At these conventions, go up and talk to them, share your story, listen to theirs, you know, ask for their number. Uh, most people are going to not only give you their number, but they're going to help you on the phone, and that's, that's the key. So in my opinion, I'm kind of old school. I build the relationship, I get them on the phone with people, I match them up, and that's kind of how I do it. If I can get face-to-face -face with somebody, go to lunch or whatever, or just have a one-on-one -on -one meeting, that's where I do my best recruiting. However, we have signed up a lot of people on transformation parties. So when you get somebody started, your objective is to get them their quick start, right? And if they're really wanting to do something you you go for the extreme but one of the best ways is they may not be ready to do a presentation but you can go over there if they can get eight or ten people over in their house you can go over there and present and then they sign up three four five people and all of a sudden they got their quick start they got most of the product paid for and now the pressure's off plus when they get that money in the porthole they're going to see that this is a real business so that's kind of what we did. Um, obviously, the app now is unbelievable. I've been using it the last two or three days, and it's working great. Um, and you can expedite your exposures a lot faster with that. So uh, don't be afraid to get out of the house and talk to people. Um, it's so easy to get a number and email if you do it right with rejection-free strategy. So. You know, for instance, uh, you know, I was I was at a, a enterprise rent a car the other day. I had to take my truck in for a recall. This guy comes in, brings me a car, real nice guy, and gets to talk. And I said, "How long you worked here?" And he goes, "Told me two years." And I said, "Is that is this your dream job?" And I shut up. And he goes, "No." <laughs> he goes, "You know, I." I, I want to do more with my life. And I said, are you open to making money outside of working at Enterprise? Shut up. You know, I got his phone number. I said, you know, I'd send him some information or I'd give him a call. But the point is, it wasn't hard to get it. Now, one of the things you might want to do is actually say, well, here's my direct contact number and start writing it down for them before you ask for theirs. And then say, what's yours? And, and your percentage of getting a phone number is going to go up by about 50%. If they don't want to give you the number, they're going to give you an email anyway. And on our app now, we can email people. So um, lately, I've been getting a lot more phone numbers just because I've been using that strategy. So it's it's been really cool. So anyway, you know, after going to Silver Manager, I mean, the pressure was on. And um, a year and two months after that, I hit executive. And I won my trip to Dubai, yeah. And then I hit it about five five months out of eight or something, uh, and the big money started rolling in for me. And, um, you know, I look back on the journey, and Fred always told me, you know, enjoy the journey no matter, you know, whether you're in a peak or a valley. And I, I couldn't do that. You know, I, when I was in a valley, and especially when I was battling depression and anxiety, you know, I just felt like the whole world was on top of me and a big weight, and I wasn't enjoying it. Um, but now I've learned through personal development, uh, the right mindset that, like today, I had two calls today that went great and then looked like we were going to sign them up tonight, and they moved it till tomorrow. Guess what? Didn't bother me because I took the emotion out of the exposure because it's all a numbers game and, and the timing has got to be right for people. So, you know, you have to have what I call lead overlap. You have to have more people on a list than you know what to do with. Okay. And I'll, I can talk about a little bit of that, but, uh, but 
yeah, then uh, ended up making a million dollars and got in my ring and, and uh, you know, I bought a farm and I, Lori and I went in on a Cherokee for her. It was her dream. And I bought a lot to build a house. And eight and a half years ago, I owed my dad $1,400, was thousands of dollars in debt. Um, you know, I had two old trucks with 220,000 miles on them. My health was not good. So, you know, if I can do it, anybody on this call can do it. It's, you have to work at it. It's, it's not net play. It's net work. Yeah, good, but that's a good one. I like that. That's awesome. Yeah. So, Tom, if you could go back and do over something, what would be the one thing you would do over to accelerate your business? Um, or not even accelerate it, but just change something that you did? I would uh, change the fact that I – you know, I did a lot of personal development and I did, I, you know, I'd get on YouTube and I'd look up, okay, way to expose, invite, excite, do all these things. And I wasn't comfortable getting out of my comfort zone soon enough. So what I would say is this, okay, I don't care how many books you've read, how much you know about our ingredients, how great you know, you think our pay plan is, it has, it has nothing to do with anything if you don't get your butt out of bed and start talking to people. So if you write down a list of 10 things to do tomorrow, I would write down, talk to people, and I would just write that 10 times. Because, you know, we can only saturate our brain with so much motivation. And like this morning, I did my uh, daily devotion, and I did uh, two YouTube videos on dreaming. And I posted something about dreaming today. And then I went out and I got on the phone and I started talking to people because activity is the only thing that we get paid for. Now, there's two things we get paid for, all right? And you have to focus on those two things for at least two hours a day. The other 22 hours a day, you can do whatever you want. But you cannot, you can multitask, you can take a shower and sing but you can't multi-focus. So you can't think of A and B at the same time in your mind. Just go ahead and try it. You can't do it. You're going to see A or you're going to see B. So people are on their cell phone, you know, uh, just wasted time surfing the net, looking at Facebook. That's all multitasking. It's not making any money. We only get paid to do two things, recruit and retail. That's it. And, you know, for us, I mean, it's pretty easy to, to – you know, either, you know, get a member or distributor. But my point is, if you're not going through the numbers and, and you don't have income producing activities, and let's say tomorrow for two hours between 11 and 1, I set aside just to work on my contacts on recruiting and retailing. And you called me. Okay, now if you needed a three-way for me and text me, I would do it. But if you're, you know, if you're just my Aunt Gloria and you call me to talk to me about the weather, I can't take that call. I can call you back in two hours because that's split focus and it's not doing my business, you know, any good. And you can't lead a team if you're not leading by example. And I need to get better at recruiting. I, I recruited a lot more people when I first started. Of course, I work with a lot more people, which takes more time. But I have to get my five or six or ten people recruited every month. And when that happens and your downline's watching you, you know, th they get respect from that. And the other thing that I would like to say is probably the, the best thing I've done as a leader, because it took me about four years to even lead, is I am reliable. If I tell you I will call you at 8 o'clock, I will call you at 8 o'clock. If I tell you I'm going to be at a meeting, I will be at the meeting. If I get in a wreck and I can't make it, I will text you. They're, not everybody does that. But if you keep doing that, no matter how, you know, where you're at rank-wise, you're going to get the respect of your team because they know that when they need you, that you're going to be there for them. So I think that's important. But if you want, I can go through our st uh, six steps to success really quick. It's up to you. Oh, I would love for you to. If you've got the time, we've got the time. Okay. Well, so, so really, 
not, not paying you any attention. I'm looking to write. So. Well, okay, really quick. So Freddie Elias, who's made almost $3 million, is my sponsor. Okay. So he came up with the six steps to success. They're pretty basic, but most people overlook them. So the first one is know your why. Now, this is what you're passionate about. Now, here was my problem. My why was to own a farm, okay? That was my, that's what I went to bed thinking about, and that's what I woke up thinking about. The problem was, it was a materialistic why, and it wasn't going to get me that farm. So two years into it, I decided to let go, let God have it, and I said, what I'm going to do is fill the needs of people, and I'm going to help people. Because if I help enough people get what they want, I'll get everything that I want. And that's Zig Ziglar said that. So you have to do that. Now, when I did that, it was unbelievable. I went 10000 a month. Here's what I suggest. Get a dream vision board. I had one eight and a half years ago, and I still have it. And the farm that I just bought three months ago, that exact farm is on that board. So, wow. you know, can you believe that? That's yeah, awesome. I got it. So you didn't tell so, me three months ago. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, we closed on it. Yep. The second one is you got to become a product to your product. You can't just buy products and then sell them and and tell people how great they are if you're not putting them in your body. So you also need to teach people how to build their story the first time out. That eight days is so important because. If you're doing the product, drinking the water, eating the right food, okay, you might have a story like, okay, in eight days I lost 12 pounds and nine inches, uh, feel great energy, blah, blah, blah. Well, if you didn't do the program right, you only lost six pounds and four inches, there's a big difference in that story, and it could cost you a ton of money if you become a distributor. So you want to teach your people how to take the product right, how to tell their story and keep it short. People talk way too long about their story. You know, my story, like I told you, I lost 14 pounds and three inches of my waist in eight days, down 31 pounds after four months, no exercise, cholesterol in the normal range, back didn't hurt, didn't have to go to the chiropractor. Um, you know, I don't, get, I've never had the flu in eight and a half years. Uh, that's it. You know, 30 seconds, you're done. And then move on to your business story. People don't, people don't care about any of that other stuff. They really don't. So that's the way it is. So the third one is methods of recruiting and sponsoring. So everyone has a center of influence, okay? None of us have touched all of our warm market. I don't care who you are if you've been in the company eight, nine years. We all have a chicken list. But the one thing in your back office, if you go to it, it's called the memory jogger, and you whip that sucker out, and you start going through it and write names down, you could come up with another two or 300 people. You've got Facebook. You've got your phone contacts. Um, you know, another way we already talked about is home presentations. Those are huge. And now you've got the app to go along after you've made your exposure. And the beauty of that app is you can see how long that they looked at the video and then you can go hot or cold or whatever. So I love it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome. I start, I didn't oh. use my slider in the beginning and then I started saying, yeah, I am. So yeah, <laughs> it didn't take okay, me. Number, number four is goals. Okay. When you get somebody sponsored, you need to try to get them, to sponsor four to 10 people in the first two weeks. And here's why. They're going to get their $100 quick start. If they get 10, you're going to be able to push them to get their extreme builder. And I don't know if, any, if you've ever had an extreme builder of you, but in my seventh year, I never had one and I had three in one month. Wow. Wow. It was crazy. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. Okay. So, you got to do that, and then out of that, you're going to see who sticks their head up out of the sand that's going to be your business builders. So let's say you sign up 10, and, you know, six of them do the product right, the other four quit, 
and two of them decide they want to be distributors, stick their head up out of the sand, you got to run with them, and you got to give them a task. So uh, to take their temperature, you might just email them uh, or text them, and you could use the app. You might say, hey, uh, Jenny, I'm going to send you an, uh, a short video on my buddy Brian Martin, and I want you to tell me what you like best about it. Now, if they can't go on there and look at a three-minute video and text you back and tell you what you like best, then you may not have a builder. You may have what I call a fluffer, okay, <laughs> lip service, okay? So you have to find out, and then if they do come back and hit you up, then you give them a second task. Hey, Jenny, awesome. I need you to write down your top 20 people that you would love to do this business with, and let's, let's get them on the phone. You have to give them tasks or you're never going to find out. You're, you're going to waste your time with so many people that you're not putting your time with the people you should be putting in with them. All right, number five, uh, Facebook Live. you got to plug people into the Monday night uh, room at the top, 830. And Cal also has one at 1230 every day. Those are important. You have to keep your people in the game, all right? That also leverages your time. So let's say I've got 10 distributors under me. I say, hey, go to room at the top, Monday night training. Now I've got 10 people looking at that, okay? And it's leveraging my time, all right? Three-way calling, so important. You know, conference calling, whatever you want to call it. But you need to teach your people how to set that call up. The way I do it, I would call you first, and then I would call my prospect. When they get on the phone, I would say, hey, Nancy, hang on a second. I'd, I'd hit it, and then I would introduce you properly. I would say, Nancy, look, I'm really excited. Um, I added uh, Vicki on the phone. Uh, she's got a great story, and, you know, she can help us, you know, answer some product questions. You know, I'm fairly new in the business or whatever you got to say. And then go to mute, and you're going to talk. When you're done, you're going to say, so Tom, you know, go ahead and take, you know, you know, finish up. And then I'm going to come on then. I don't, I don't start talking unless you're done. And so many people are talking over each other. It's, it's just not professional. So we need to teach people how to do that. Uh, the other thing we got to do is duplicate. You know, I mean, we got to teach people how to expose, how to invite, how to excite, and we need to teach them how to three-way call and we need to teach them how to uh, sign them up with the right kit I mean obviously there's people that are selling cores that aren't even bringing up the uh, ultimate because they're afraid of the price well that's ridiculous you know you got to go up here to come down to the ignite you know or, or the core so you, you got to lead strong you got to believe in our company you got to believe in our uh, products and you have to have a belief in our industry and you got to have a belief in yourself because if you don't have that posture, then people are going to see right through that. Last one's personal growth. So to become a better leader, you got to get stronger. The better you are, the more you work on yourself, the better leader you're going to be. So you got to read and you got to listen to audios. I'm an audio guy. I like, you know, stuff in my truck. I like YouTube. You can get all that stuff for free on YouTube. Just, you know, anything you want on network marketing. Jim Rohn is a great one. Um, the one I like is about an hour long. It's uh, building your business, building your network marketing business, Jim Rohn. Everybody should listen to that. And then you can go on there and just type in network marketing. You know, everybody, you know, wonders how to get contacts. And there's all kind of stuff, you know, on there. But if you find someone that makes sense to you, then then stick with that person because, you know, you can't jump around. Now, Big Al Schreider, he's got some good verbiage I like, like, you know, if I would you. So if I sent you an app that's three minutes video, would you watch it? He's got some great verbiage. I think my problem for many years was I just fumbled the verbiage all the time, you know. You have to be very direct with what you say, and you have to practice it. And to be honest with you, recording, recording yourself is not a bad idea. Kind of like doing a live, but you're doing it on a recording. Yeah. 
That's a good idea. Yeah. So that's about all I got. That's some good stuff, let me tell you. I appreciate it so much, so much. And uh, it was fun meeting you this weekend. Uh oh, is that Melissa? I thought somebody else was saying something. It was a great weekend. Congratulations on your ring. I'm going to call you for three ways. Um, okay. Awesome. And we're all going to take your advice right here, and we're going to get our ring soon. Get, so, go, go, go activity. Just do. Just do. Right? Just, just do. Then get up and do it again the next day. That's right. Take Sunday off if you want. Do what? Take Sunday off if you want. Sunday off. <laughs> A little bit. Go <laughs> to church okay. on Sunday and then go at it. No. Right. Have a good you. night. Thank you. Okay. I appreciate it. Awesome okay. job. Are y'all there? Who's still here? Who's here? I'm here. If I can say who else he is. Melissa is. Has anybody got any questions? I don't know how to unmute anybody. I guess Melissa has to do it. Melissa, are you there? Can you see her, Kendra? Do y'all have any questions? I have no, uh, she has no audio. She's Melissa's rocking the there. baby, so. She's oh, there, okay. she's rocking the baby. <laughs> okay. Do y'all have any questions about what he said? No, he did good. He's real good. I thoroughly enjoyed listening to him this week. Yeah. Purely by accident.